Hello, everyone. The voice that you're hearing is Lily May, creator of the Glambitious brand. And I am excited to bring you another installment of our interview series where we connect you to a dynamic woman visionary. If you are new to the platform, please follow us on social media at Glambitious I A M. Follow us on Clubhouse at the Glambitious Club. And also visit theglamceo.com to check out the many opportunities, events, and resources we've created for women entrepreneurs. So without further ado, Ms. LeRae, please introduce yourself to those who are watching. Hello, Glambitious viewers. So happy to be here. My name is LeRae E. Dyer, and I am a faith-based mental health coach for moms. I help secretly frustrated and discouraged moms rediscover, prioritize, and accomplish their dreams and aspirations beyond motherhood. So great to be here. Yeah, so tell me a little bit about how you got started with Abundant Grace Coaching. Yeah, that's an interesting journey. So I got started with Abundance Grace Coaching because I suffered with um, severe postpartum depression. And uh, climbing my way out of that was more than a notion. And once I feel felt that I fully recovered, I wanted to basically provide an avenue for moms who are, are struggling on any level, it doesn't have to necessarily be postpartum depression, but struggling on any level um, to help them and empower them to protect their spiritual health, mental health, and personal development. Yes, yes. I think that is so phenomenal that, you know, you've taken your own journey and used it as a catalyst to pursue your purpose. And so, you know, with your journey in motherhood, what do you feel like have been some of the biggest challenges that you faced? Good question as well. So for me, I, I mean, I see a lot of moms, particularly some of my girlfriends, and they just look like <laughs> they have it all together. For me, motherhood in and of itself was a challenge and is a challenge. Um, I think with my daughter, you know, I did experience some depression during the pregnancy. I had a very rough delivery. I had gestational diabetes. I had preeclampsia. You know, I had a lot of complications with my pregnancy, in part because I got pregnant older. Um, you know, so her coming into the world was a little difficult and becoming a new mom, you know, certainly a learning curve there. And then I had my son and I had similar complications with him. But the depression that I experienced was much more severe uh, to the extent that I actually participated in intensive outpatient treatment for psychiatric care. So, you know, the tremendous challenges that came in part were um, attributed to being a mother. But I think the largest part of it was attributed to the severe depression that I was experiencing. Wow. Wow. So I'm actually turning 40 soon and I have yet to have children. And that is one of my biggest fears mm -hmm. is that because I will be older having children that there could be, you know, those types of challenges. Do you have any advice for women, you know, who are embarking on, you know, um, being mothers later in life? Sure. To better prepare or maybe even I don't know if it's even preventable postpartum depression. Um, if it's preventable, you know, what what do you suggest? That's such a good question, Lily May. The, the thing about it for me is that I got married at 35, which is, is late considered, you know, by society. I got married at 35 and I had my second baby like right before I turned 40. So in the medical world, that's considered a geriatric pregnancy is what they call it. I was offended. Basically, when you're outside of a certain range, you're considered high risk. And I went through Emory Healthcare, you know, it's a wonderful healthcare system and I had really good coverage. So part of me being successful in carrying my baby was that I had weekly care. I went in weekly where sometimes you may, you know, may hear mothers going every month or whatever so often. I went in weekly so that they could closely monitor that everything was tracking um, as expected. And so I think um, in part, you want to ensure that you have access to the proper care that you'll need. And the other part of that, which, which probably is a bigger um, consideration is self-care. And I know that you're excellent with that, Lily Mae, but really taking care of yourself spiritually, 
Um, because, you know, it can be lonely sometimes being pregnant. And I, I was married. Um, but, you know, there are some things that don't translate well in relationships and that people just don't understand. And so, you know, having a spiritual relationship really grounds you and you have an advocate. So I certainly would encourage that. I also would encourage mental health support. So I am a proponent of counseling. So some of the challenges that I had in, in pregnancy, I was actually in counseling. So I can't imagine where I would have been had I not had ongoing support during my pregnancy, but it gives you an opportunity to speak with someone that's not going to judge you, not necessarily even provide advice or solution, but someone that is positioned to listen and listen in a productive way and ask the right questions so that you can articulate some of the feelings that you otherwise would not speak out. And lastly, personal development. When I was um, leading up to the pregnancy of my son, I actually um, began a certification program to become a, a wellness coach. And I was really, really excited about that. And then I got pregnant. So my in my head, I was going to become a wellness coach, you know, lose a bunch of weight, have a website where I'm looking super wonderful, inviting women to look wonderful with me. It was very aesthetic. <laughs> and so when I got pregnant, I was so um, I was conflicted. You know, I'll just be honest. I was happy um, that we were having another child because we had recently had a miscarriage. But at the same time, I was frustrated and disappointed because my personal um, dreams and aspirations got put on hold. And I really did not see a way for that to come to pass. And it really wasn't until I experienced what I experienced through having my son, the depression, that I developed and understood what my niche was within the mental health and uh, wellness uh, portion of organization. Mm -hmm. So as a faith-based mental health coach for moms, you know, what is your goal through your efforts or, or how can they connect with you or, you know, how do they benefit from connecting with you? So, so what I have designed is I, I really got a download. I'll just be completely honest. Um, ultimately, I have a small group coaching program that really steps moms, steps moms through from really rediscovering the vision, you know, because a lot of us have a vision or had a vision at one point. It just gets clouded and, and a lot of interference and um, noise. And so it's really an opportunity to take moms from the place of revisiting and rediscovering their vision all the way up to being prepared to implement and live out that vision. So, you know, it's a steady process. It's a 12 week program and uh, there are seven different pillars within the program. But ultimately, um, what I have in my introductory package is focused on vision. And so that's where we want to uh, start. Absolutely. And so this is, you know, a unique season. We're entering the holiday season during the second year of a pandemic. So I know that for moms, you know, some moms have children that are still doing virtual learning and then some moms have children that are actually in school, which has its own challenges. Right. So what is your advice to moms to kind of weather the season that, that we are in right now? I My advice is to take care of yourself. I know when I was at my lowest um, and in counseling, my therapist said to me, keep your baby safe and be kind to yourself. So at its most basic level, keep your baby safe and be kind to yourself. I mean, that is the foundation from where you want to start, particularly if you're having challenges. But as you're healing and as you're getting better and well um, or thriving, you know, you want to just really consider your emotional health and what you need to do to really maintain that, whether, you know, it's uh, counseling or various ways that you can enhance that and also your spiritual health as well. And um, it's been really healthy for me personally. Um, I recently got on Clubhouse and joined, um, you know, groups that are spiritual. And your group is is one of my favorite, um, the Glambitious Club, because you not only provide so much wisdom and help from an entrepreneurial perspective, but you have a lot of spiritual based um, devotions. And that 
has made a tremendous difference for me because like you said, with the pandemic, I have, uh, my husband and I were looking for a church and then the pandemic hit. So we didn't have, you know, an existing foundation And I was feeling really disconnected because prior to, I was extremely active in my faith community. So, you know, things may not work out the way that you're intending them to work out, but find alternatives. And for me, Clubhouse was an alternative um, to that spiritual support that I needed. In addition to that, I actually also host a club every Friday for uh, women, and it's in co- it's entitled "Scary Moms." I'm sorry, good moms have scary thoughts, and so this is within the Real Moms Club, and I really um, do it to support women who are struggling and don't have an outlet for these conversations because a lot of times family don't understand, friends don't understand, spouse doesn't understand, you know, and people approach it like, "Get yourself together." But like I said, it's more than a notion and it takes um, consciousness and intention to really um, make the changes that you want to see in your life. So I would say take care of yourself, keep your baby safe and do what you can to support those primary areas of your life. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then, of course, get tapped into community like the one that, you know, you're building. I know you have your own club, too. Right. I do. Yes. Right. And I think, you know, um, having a community to just share the things that we kind of keep quiet and I'm not a mother, but just period as people, you know, Mm -hmm. we keep so many things quiet. And sometimes you do feel like you're the only one thinking a certain way or experiencing a certain thing. So I love that you've created a specific community, you know, Mm -hmm. to support women who are in a specific place in their life and in their walk. Um, so, you know, let us know if there's anything special you have coming up. This this interview will be posted on November 14th, which I know by then you would have already hosted your uh, webinar or retreat that you're having. But mm-hmm. after that, you know, how so, else can people connect with you or tune in with what you have? So you can connect with me on Instagram. My Instagram handle is Abundant Grace Coaching. It's Abundant underscore Grace underscore Coaching. And that's really the best way to get an idea of what's going on and and the latest and greatest. But I will say that even after the 14th, I'm beginning my introductory program, which takes place in December. So you'll have an opportunity to enroll the week of the 14th. So it's timely. Um, And with that, we'll be doing a seven-day introductory program in exploring vision. Awesome, awesome. And if you had any other closing thoughts that you wanted to share or anything else you wanted to leave the viewers with? I appreciate that so much. I would love to leave the viewers with hope and with courage because being a mom is extremely difficult and there is an outlet, there is a remedy, there is a, uh, there are goals and aspirations beyond motherhood that can be accomplished. It's just really finding yourself the right place that will honor and uh, support what it is that you want to do. So certainly if you're interested, I would love to have you in the introductory program and we are going to focus on rediscovering your vision. I love it. I love it. And so one of the things that really, um, you know, I guess sticks out to me about your journey is that you use one of, you know, the darkest times in your life and birth purpose from that. And Mm -hmm. I think that is something else uh, that viewers can take from this is that if you are in a dark season right now, if you're in a low season right now, that there is purpose on the other side of it. Mm -hmm. And so the Ray and myself, I think both of us, you know, um, are examples of that, that after you weather the storm, there is purpose on it. And if you can just hold on to the vision and know that, you know, this is just processing time, right? God is just processing you for the promise. Then um, I think it'll just help you ease a little bit more through this, this wilderness that you might be in. And I just love that you said hope is what you leave people with. I would like to leave the viewers with that as well, that, that you can just, you know, focus on the day ahead of you and know that better days are ahead. So that will be 
my closing thoughts to add to what Miss Therese said. Definitely, moms, if you're tuned into this, connect with her on all social platforms, on Clubhouse. Um, just, you know, stay in, in touch with her because she has a lot of things coming up to support moms. And I feel like mothers are the superheroes of our world. I know my mom is my superhero. So, you know, I really applaud moms, especially moms who are entrepreneurs because entrepreneurship is tough. So mm -hmm. I applaud uh, you, Larray, for, you know, being a support to the moms who are the visionaries and who are the, the backbone, you know, of our world. So I definitely want to thank everyone for tuning in to another episode of the Glambitious interview series. Bye for now.